Okay, so we're going to start the details. These are the, my supplies for this. I have my purple paint that I will use for various parts. I'm going to put a little bit of the thicker stuff in the lid, mix it up a bit. I have my red paint. And this is quite a few different colors all mixed together. Um, at this particular stage, I'm not doing enough of the details to separate out too much color yet, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I'll need a very fine point, tiny little brush for some of the details. A larger blending brush. This one looks like it's been loved and abused a bit, but I clean clean it out when I'm done with it so it just is kind of a stained color. I'll need a smaller blending brush. These ones never get put directly in the paint. They're just there for blending out the details. This one is for creases and various things like that to... It looks abused and battered, but it is a handy, sturdy little brush. Um, so those are my main supplies. I'll use this sponge a little bit again, and I will use a fresh sponge like this. So these are my supplies for this level. All right. First off, I'm going to start with some cheeks for this little guy or girl, and I'm going to use my mixing paintbrush. I'm going to put it directly on the face in kind of a V-shaped. I'm going to come in with my brush or my sponge and I will blend this out. You cannot see the where it stops and where it starts. It should just be add a little bit of rosy color to it. A little more color, that's all we wanted. And a V-shape on this side. Pretty simple, but extraordinarily effective. Now we're going to come in with our tiny brush. And we're going to start to darken up some of these creases. Again, I'm going to make this one kind of a red-headed, fair-skinned baby. Um, so we don't want it to be too newborn and too pink. Now I'm going to come in with my purple. And we're going to put a little bit of purple just across the bridge of the nose. And we're going to take our blending brush. blend that color down into the vinyl so it's not sticking out as a stripe or anything. That just adds a little more depth right through that area where the skin is very thin. Okay, now we're going to come in with our red again and start to darken up these creases. Now we're going to add a little bit of color to this under crease, and if we emphasize it too much, it's going to look really scowly. So we don't want too much here, we just want enough to make it look like there's a little bit of a contour and add a little bit of color. Again with this side. Now 
All right, we're going to come back to our lips, add our next layer. I forgot to grab my lip brush. Reach over and grab it real quick. And now on the lips, we don't want solid, straight, crisp lines. It needs to be kind of a little bit blurry and a little bit smeary so it doesn't look like somebody put a lipstick on them. side's a little darker than this side, so we're going to have to put a little bit more on the right. And if you have a little blurp that kind of hops out of the lines and makes it look gunky, then use a fingernail or a, something sharp, like a toothpick or something to help remove that smudge mark. Okay, so the top one is done. Okay, I think that's as dark as we're going to go on the lips. We don't want it too red looking. The video shows it more pink than it actually looks in real life. It's kind of strange, but that's what we're going to do for that and stop there. We're going to come emphasize some of these creases a little bit darker. Okay, so now I'm going to get some wet paint straight from the jar. I don't want it too concentrated. This needs to be a little more wet. Now for this, we're going to do a little bit of a top of the eye just to give it a little more color up there. It's not going to add too much at a time. If I did that in the dark stuff, it would make the poor thing look like it had been crying for hours. Just very soft. It's kind of a peaches and cream kind of a look. Alright. So now we're going to do a little bit across the tip of the nose. Similar effect. We just want to pinken it up just to... Separate it out from the rest of the nose. Blend it down. Now in a little bit darker paint, we're going to come back in with a little bit of the pink. Blend that in. Okay, so now I'm going to do uh, kind of the, the crown of the head. 
um, try to zoom this out so you can see a better picture of the far out view of this. I'm going to take my blending brush, or my paint brush, the stirring pot brush, straight to the paint. Turn my head sideways so I have better access to it. I'm going to paint a little bit of this light pink straight onto the head. And I'm going to stop it right around the temple area. And then I'm going to grab it from the back and then I'm going to blend it down. And it's not going to come all the way down. I don't want it to touch the eyebrows. I want it to kind of separate across the forehead here. So it looks like it's a little paler through this section, but a little more pink on the top of the head. And not a ton's pink. You don't want this too dark either. It's going to look like your poor baby's been abused. Okay, so now we're going to carry that around. This little one's pretty close to being just about to the point where I can call it quits on her because she's not going to get much darker. He or she's not going to get much darker. Um, I want it to be a redhead, and redheads are notoriously fair-skinned. I'm just using excess in the brush to add to her ears. And with a little bit of the darker stuff, I'm going to add just a bit to the bottom of her ears. And a little bit to the top of her ears. So now her cute little ear looks like its own appendage and it's got the dimensions of having its own freedom of skin from the head. Okay, so we have the back of the ear, the top of the ear, the bottom of the ear, the inner ear. I'm going to flip over and do her other ear. Top of her ear. Back of her ear. I don't know if you guys can see it on there, but I see a line right here in my paint, so I'm going to I'm going to blend that a little bit more so I don't have any sticky, straight little lines. Okay. I think that's enough for this particular layer. Now we're going to cook her and um, I can come back with her eyebrows and her hair lines and She'll be good to go. Okay, so one of the last things I want to do with this baby is give her some the minuscule details um, of itty bitty veins. This just adds that much more life to them and um, makes them that much more realistic. So I just dipped my paint in the watery parts of my jar. I don't want this too dark. And I wiped off the excess color. Now with 
only part of my brush with a very gentle force I'm going to very carefully drag on some teeny tiny veins Now we want these to be real looking so we don't want them to look like they're puddled on top of the skin. So we're going to gently tap on top of them and remove excess paint. We're going to add some over here to the side of the head. I'm kind of going over the top of her normal blue veins and then just adding a few more extensions to that with the pink. Little tiny squirrely veins, nothing big or deep or too detailed. And this paint for some reason lasts a long time on your paintbrush. You won't have to dip too many times. dark so we're going to dust that one down a little bit. And these ones all but disappeared so we're going to go over them a little bit again. The point of adding these is so that they're visible and not so that they disappear and you can't see them. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple more details. I'm going to swirl my paint and get the jar tipped on a sponge so I can get access to the thin stuff. Now we're going to do a, a very light layer of modeling on top of the cheeks. They shouldn't really add much color. It's just there to add the shapes that we need. Now with the edges of these, we're going to blend that in. And as it dries, it kind of just sinks and looks like it's always been there. I'm going to do one right down here on the chin. Okay. Now I'm going to get my yellow out. The same color I used for the wash in a few steps ago. And my yellow modeling sponge. I have kittens that like to eat my sponges and take off with them, so I have to separate them from temptation so they don't steal my sponges and run around with them. We're going to dip our sponge in the yellow and we're going to come back and give this baby a yellow model right over the top and around the edges of the cheeks, through the forehead, across the nose. On the top lip, on the chin, around the ears, and kind of disappearing back up into the head. I'm going to do this as a layer on the skin, on the legs and arms too. Um, so while we have our yellow out, we need to intensify the yellow directly on top of this guy's nose. So I'm going to get my yellow paintbrush, use the lid so I don't have too much wet. 
get rid of some of the wet on the brush. We'll come back to our baby. We're going to put a yellow right across the bridge of his nose. We're going to come with our, our yellow blending brush. Gently tap that in so it blends in. And you see how much more real that looks? It gives you that much more depth and color. Down here we're going to blend it a little bit. So this little guy, I'm kind of thinking it looks more like a boy at this point. We'll see what hair does, but this guy girl, I think is about ready for eyebrows. Um, I was going to cook them before, but I decided to do some yellow and with the veins on them. I forgot to do in the first chunk of this. Okay. So if it's your baby, you can add whatever you want to it. You can add um, birthmarks up in the head. Um, I'll give this little one just a small one so you can see. I'm just using the paint straight from the wet stuff. I don't want it too dark. And we're going to give it a little birthmark right up here in the scalp. It doesn't take much and then all of a sudden you have a pink mark. So easy does it on the color with this. So you don't want to make it look like your baby's been had an abusive family first. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of a birthmark right here. Maybe one over here. And there you go. Alright, so I'm going to let this dry. We're going to cook him, or her, and then um, we'll come back for limbs and hair rooting and, and painting, those kind of things. So I will see you in a bit.